hi guys welcome back so today we're talking about the schmincke horridum artist grade watercolors so these are gorgeous creamy colors and we're going to swatch them off this dot card so several of the um, high-end brands are now doing these dot cards with all their colors contained on either you know one or more sheets of this watercolor paper and then you can try the colors yourself before you commit to a whole tube so here we have 140 colors and you can see that it had like that plastic sheet in between them to sort of protect the paint and that's actually also really good to use for your Caran uh, Museum Aquarelle or the Neocolor 2 um, products as a palette as well. So these are the dot cards we did last time. This is the Windsor and Newton ones and I really love these colors as well so a couple of these I have and a couple more I want to try so one of the reasons I wanted to do this project was first of all to see if there are any colors um, you know that I feel like I'm missing in my palette I think it even when you look them up online it still is a little bit different when you see them in person so I do want to try and make sure you can see you know a, a good portrayal of the color here how it behaves um, how it moves on the paper, you know, how it disperses and all of that. And I really love these dot cards because you can try the colors. You can try them in paintings, you can mix them, you can try them with other colors that you already have on your palette. Like this is the lemon yellow and I have had that on my palette for five or six years. I use the uh, lemon yellow with the Daniel Smith French ochre to create kind of my own quinacridone gold. And at first glance, you might be thinking, you know, there's quite a lot of yellows here, but I think one of the things is they are a primary, you know, one of the primary colors. So there are, they all have different characteristics. We have more opaque ones, more transparent, uh, more light fast. And I think that's something I want to look into, maybe getting a more light fast version of a lemon yellow. So going through all the dot cards, that's something that I'm considering. And you might have a different, you know, either a hole in your palette or something you want to replace or change that you might be looking for. So, you know, hopefully this is a little bit helpful. So while we are looking at these, I'll just explain as well. The, the stars at the bottom indicate light fastness. So it's how long, you know, this will stay on the paper and perform um, in sunlight or just in you know conditions that aren't necessarily museum conditions um, so the more stars the more light fast it is the there's a G for granulating or for non granulating the box I believe is for transparency so if it's an open box it's transparent the more it's closed in it becomes more opaque so if it's fully, um, if the square's fully colored in, it's opaque. The triangle is for staining, how staining it is. So if it's an open triangle, it's not staining. And if it's a closed in triangle, it's really staining. So generally, I think most of my colors are non-staining. I like to stay away from the staining ones just because it's easier to lift. And I find them a little bit easier to work with. But I know a lot of artists really like the phthalo colors, which are staining, but you know, it works in their, um, you know, process and their artworks uh, might work for their subjects. So that's another thing that you're, you're looking at, like colors that will work for the things you want to paint. And some artists really like to only use granulate, uh, uh, what am I saying, transparent colors. Uh, and some, you know, sometimes you might need opacity for something. Uh, so this is the quinacridone light of a million light. I have this one. I really like this one. It is not, um, doesn't have much light fastness, but it's a really gorgeous color. And uh, we'll see in a minute. Is this quinacridone red light? This I think this is a little bit like the Daniel Smith Quin Coral. So it's a really pretty color.
So the three reds that we just did are some of my favourite. The ruby red is like the Daniel Smith Quinn Rose. And the one before that, the Permanent Carmine, I was actually shocked at the really nice kind of texture that it had. Um, the Rose Matter I really love. It's a soft sort of pink and especially in the next video we will do my favourite mixes, some of, some of them. And um, the Rose Matter with the Titanium White is really beautiful. It really creates a soft pink like petal colour. So a lot of you have highly recommended the... Potter's Pink from Schmincke uh, for quite a while so yes it is a beautiful colour and I did find it a little hard here to re-wet um, but a couple of them were, I love this Perla Maroon as well but um, I did find a couple of them or sorry Perla and Violet but I did find a couple of them hard to re-wet I'm not sure if it was because of the plastic that was um, against them and it kind of uh, took some of that uh, moisture out of the watercolors I'm not really sure but yeah in the next video we'll swatch some of my favorite colors as well and the Perlin violet and the potter's pink are definitely up there I really love the Schmincke violet as well and this cobalt violet hue Schmincke violet was one of the first Schmincke colors that I got and I really I really like it I still like it so you'll see that some of these blues are real show-offs. They're really beautiful, showy colours, uh, especially these three. They're just so lovely. One of the things I'm looking for when I'm swatching them is how they dance in the water, how they move, and sort of what I can create with that. So I really love these. I do cut off a couple of the names here, but I do go back and show you what they were. So this one here is the Cobalt Blue Deep. I really like this one. So these two blues here I really like, the Mountain Blue and the Cobalt Asia. And one of the things that I'm looking for when I am swatching the dot cards is just thinking, sort of increasing my colour lexicon. So I'm trying to kind of uh, take note of colours that I like or colours that I think might work in future paintings and just have that there in the back of my mind if something comes up and I'm like, oh yeah, I can you know, go back and look at those blues and see if I want to use any one of those. Sometimes they might be more appropriate for a subject matter or they might give you a different um, texture or look that you are trying to work on. I really like that Paris blue as well. So the cobalt turquoise that we just did and the cobalt green turquoise, I really like. I have the cobalt turquoise in my palette. The viridian we're doing here was a bit hard to re-wet and I think that it seems to be a trait of viridian. So it's probably better to use that one from the ch and just squeeze out a little on your palette anytime you, you know, need to use it. I really like this uh, Chromium Oxide Green Brilliant. It is a little bit of a softer version of the Thalo Green. 
but the the thalo green's also really beautiful but i think it's kind of like the cobalt blue versus ultramarine i always sort of tend towards the one with that's a little bit um less saturated So there is a really nice selection of greens. I really like the cobalt green dark. It, um, I like colors that kind of have this finish, this kind of matte satin finish when they dry and that is definitely one of them. Um, I also really like the green earth and you'll see me use that in the painting that we do in the next uh, video. And it is a little bit hard to re-wet. So again, that's one of the ones that you would just use, you know, put a little bit on your palette. I, I for some reason, I really like the green earths in all of the, like I liked the Winsor & Newton ones. I like this one. They are a hard one to re-wet, but I'm willing to work with that to get the effect that I want. So again, we have a nice range of ochres and, you know, these are going to affect like the way that you, you know, how you mix them and how you use them. So they have a really nice selection. And this is the, my favorite one, the transparent ochre. For some reason, I don't mind some of my other colors being opaque. Like I really like the satin red and it is an opaque color, but, or semi-opaque, but, um, I really like my ochres to be transparent. This is also another beautiful one, the Naples Yellow Reddish. But I find with a transparent ochre, like uh, Daniel Smith French ochre is pretty transparent and a, a nice light ochre. So it doesn't um, overpower paintings and give it that kind of heavy heaviness. It can, just, it can just help keep the painting light. And I also really like the transparent Sienna there as well. I also really like this maroon brown, so um, it dries with a little bit of separation in it, a uh, color separation, and that's one of the things I'm always looking for as well, just something that gives a little bit extra, so the paint is actually adding to the painting without me having to work overtime. And we'll swatch the mahogany brown at the end of this row as well, and that's another one that has that really nice subtle color separation and it's a really pretty one. So green umber, the next one we're going to swatch is the is my favorite way to do an olive green and then I can tweak it a little bit with you know a bit more green yellow or brown but this one was a bit hard to re-wet and I really love the Daniel Smith greenish raw umber it's so creamy and really just a nice consistency to use in that spot in your palette I love both of these CP colors. I especially love the brown reddish one, this one here, and I am gonna add this to my palette. Well, I'm actually putting together a special palette. I will talk to you a little bit more about it in the next video. Um, with some paint, with some, I love the neutral tint as well. Um, yeah, with colors that kind of remind me of the old masters paintings, but also kind of my own um, take on that. Perylene Green is one I have and I am still not exactly sure how to get on with this colour so I do like it. I always like um, seeing it. I like you know swatching it but then I just I'm never sure how to use it in paintings.
I'm also really loving the anthracite so it's this one here um, I, I really like that it's sort of a soft black it's in between so the next one is graphite gray and I'm not, I really like the the coloring of the anthracite a little bit better it's just it's a really pretty shade in between sort of gray and black and I was actually surprised as well at how much I liked the Mars black it's sort of a warm black So I really love the Schmincke Silver. I You can use this in place of the Daniel Smith Pearl White. Um, so one of the reasons I wanted to swatch these is if they're more available to you, um, I'm, I want to give you some good recommendations from what I'm using, you know, where you could uh, change that for some of these colors. And I really love, the gold was a little bit hard to re-wet here, but I got the... Um, gold limited edition palette a couple of years ago it was actually really affordable and i'm hoping they bring it out again but uh, the gold is really beautiful and i will show you some mixes with that in the next video opera rose is one of my favorite colors and i also really love and you know this version is a beautiful one and then i really love this brilliant blue violet as well so I hope this was helpful. I will see you in the next video. I have had these. I apologize they haven't been up earlier this week. I've had them filmed since at least last Saturday, but um, I just haven't been able to finish the editing and voiceover. So um, they're a bit late this week, but I hope you're having a good week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.